Hi guys, okay, welcome back to um, part 2 okay, of this um, question that we were actually doing previously, okay, it's the 2015 paper, okay, A-level paper, H2 Economics question for on macroeconomics. Okay, this question we already covered a bit of it in part 1. Um, check out the previous video, okay, for part A of the Twitter question. Okay, we're going to jump straight into part B of this question, okay, and then explore how we're going to answer this question, okay. Actually, a rather easy question to answer. Okay, so... Without further ado, we'll just jump straight in. Okay, so the question goes, right? Discuss whether exchange rate appreciation okay, should remain the most important policy. Okay, take note of most important policy is an absolute uh, instrument in controlling the rate of inflation in the Singapore economy. Okay, so when we look at this question, okay, you have to assess what is the cause of this high inflation rates in Singapore. Okay, and is exchange rate really the, I mean, as in this appreciation, is it really the only policy which can be used? to um, actually help to control this inflation rate in Singapore. Okay, so firstly, we're going to start off okay, with um, a bit of an introduction. Okay, but I'm just going to briefly say how there are actually several. Let me just this. There are several other policies, okay, which can also be used. Okay, as well as um, uh, to actually use several more of like a, a few prong approach so use uh, maybe say a two or three prong approach okay to target the root cause of inflation okay so whenever you answer a part b question such as a policy question okay, you always want to first um talk about the main policy that they've really asked you to to use okay in this case you've got exchange rate okay so we're going to use our bp1 Key will be on exchange rate appreciation policy. Okay, so basically what this paragraph will help you to um, answer is is really why this policy works, okay? Why does it not work? Okay, what other policies will help to better it in making it a better policy, okay? So when you actually first talk about this, okay, um uh you're you're looking at um certain things, okay. Exchange rate always looks at mainly mainly two two focus areas of your ad okay your exports as well as your imports okay so we're going to just, just touch on that real quick okay and remember in here you're going to talk about your martial learner condition as well okay so firstly by adopting okay a gradual okay one thing i need to point out okay is that um singapore always uses a gradual appreciation policy okay they never ever use depreciation okay they always use a policy called zero appreciation whereby um, relative to other countries um, exchange rate okay, Singapore is actually in a sense um, only appreciating at a slower rate okay, they, they, they remain stable at this zero appreci appreciation rate okay, so Singapore never ever adopts depreciation okay, because it actually harms the economy instead okay, so firstly you look at um, when you even adopt okay, a gradual appreciation policy okay, what actually happens is that the price of exports in okay actually you don't have to include anything here okay but basically what happens is that the price of exports will fall and imports price of imports will rise okay so you firstly need to talk about the, the very very basic okay things over here okay which is that your exports will, will will your exports price will actually fall okay and the price of imports will actually rise instead Okay, after this causal link, you have to always bring your martial learner. Okay, or, or some of us use this other um, alternative by assuming okay, that your PD of exports is more than 1 and PD of your imports is less than 1. Okay, what actually happens is that there will be a more than proportionate okay, fall. Okay, remember, we're looking at a more than proportionate fall uh, in the quantity demanded okay, of exports and rise in the quantity demanded for imports okay oh sorry i made a mistake here so price of exports should actually rise right makes sense correct and then the price of imports will actually fall okay so then you want one proportional for in qdd and um uh, for exports and rise in quantity demanded for imports so what happens will be that your overall net exports will fall. 
right, because of x minus m. Okay, so when you actually look at this, you realize that your net value of your exports will fall, okay, because there's a greater rise in your um, quantity demanded for your imports, which is going outwards, than those which are which, which, then that's coming inwards, and those which is actually going outwards, which is the exports. So your net exports will actually fall, okay, and this um, will lead to a fall in AD. Okay, so assuming that Singapore is operating at full employment. Okay, why full employment? Okay, you can look at a tight labor market. That, that can be a um, uh, code, okay, due to the tight labor market. Okay, this will actually in itself result in a fall in GPL and hence lower and stable inflation rate. Okay, so this is, can, can actually be one of the, the tools which actually help you to um, lead to lower demand pool inflation. Okay, take lower demand pool inflation. Okay, good. Okay, next part. Okay, then we're going to talk about certain shortfalls, okay, or maybe um, added benefits. Okay, this is what we should do. Okay, we explain us the policy first. Then we talk, are there any other benefits to it? Okay, so what other benefits can you think about? Okay, for instance, with the fall in price of imports, how, how, how does this help Singapore? Okay, this will actually cause the cost of production to fall for domestic firms because you think about it now that the price of import imports have fallen okay, it's actually cheaper for domestic firms to produce goods okay uh, because you know you already know what Singapore lacks natural resources so all resources are actually imported so this would greatly help Singapore firms okay what else will actually happen this will actually cause a um, uh, lower production costs okay, due to the lower COP and hence short run AS will rise okay so when your short run AS actually rises okay, this could be um, short run it could be long run okay, usually it's short run okay, the short run um, due to the, the changes in cost of production okay, this will lead to lower cost push inflation okay so real simple just like this your first paragraph is actually done Okay, so you already tackle demand pool inflation, you tackle cost push inflation. Definitely exchange rate policy is a very, very good um, policy to use. Okay, then now we have to look at the certain limitations which it comes with. Okay, which are... So limitations to ER policy. Policy. Okay, so now you look at the limitations. Okay, you point out all the limitations. Okay, certain limitations of this exchange rate appreciation is that it is a short-term policy. Okay, um, also assumes that PED is more than 1. Okay, you see, in the short run, okay, your PED could be less than 1 due to contracts. Okay, so when you have got contra contractual obligations, okay, it's actually very hard for you to um, tell suppliers that, hey, I want to stop this uh, supply from coming in. I want, I want to change supplier, that kind of thing. Okay, it's very hard because of all these contracts that have been made. And usually contracts are long-term contracts. Okay, so when there's long-term contracts, it's actually very hard for you to go back on your word, especially in the short run. Okay, so hence, um, because of these policies, inflation may not fall by a large extent. So just point out, okay, that these are certain limitations which could exist. So the examiner knows, okay, that, okay, at least you are acknowledging that there's these, um, there are these possible limitations, okay. And one more thing, okay, you have to realize, okay, is that there could be a loss in export competitiveness. Okay, the reason for this loss in export com uh, com competitiveness is due to the fall. Okay, you see over here, there will actually be a more than proportionate fall in your quantity demand of exports. Okay, and your price of exports actually rise. So when your price of exports rise, K actually results in it being less competitive. This could be harmful in the long run. Okay, so just take note of that. Okay, so next we propose another policy. Okay, what could be another policy which we could actually help to um, mitigate this lease limitations? Okay, so you can talk about your supply side policies. Okay, how do supply side policies help? Okay. Supply side policies, you have got the market oriented and your interventionist. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. When you're looking at supply side policies, okay, we're looking for policies which aim to target the long term. Okay. As well as are able to actually 
enhance productivity. Okay, this will greatly help okay, in actually mitigating your short-term issues which your exchange rate policy poses. Okay, so examples of this okay, could be introducing subsidies or incentives for R&D. Okay, R&D is research and development to firms. Okay, what this actually helps, okay, so actually help um, to, to, to shift the long run AS, okay, outwards. Okay, the reason why, okay, I talk about this okay, is because R&D actually helps to lower the cost of production. Okay, when firms actually find lower cost of productions or uh, lower methods of producing things, okay, the cost of production will fall. Okay, and this will greatly benefit you in the long run, okay, through technology, all of those kind of uh, good stuff. Okay, so this will actually result in a lower GPL in the long run, hence reducing inflation. Okay, this one is actually very simple to explain, right? So you notice that there's not much to actually talk about it. Okay, but what else can you talk about then when it comes to R&D, okay? So R&D can also help firms, okay, to actually um, innovate, okay, and export goods which are more price inelastic. Okay, so certain examples of this okay, will include your Singapore microchips. Okay, Singapore is well known for actually exporting microchips okay, because we are very, very um, price inelastic in this, in this aspect. Okay, this will actually help to um, improve export competitiveness in the long run. Okay, and you notice this tackles the limitation of the ER policy. Okay, so in that case, actually your supply side policy kind of like kills two birds with one stone. Okay, it actually helps to mitigate this whole issue on your your um, limitations of your exchange rate policy in the case of the fall in export competitiveness. Okay, so one more thing you can talk about can, can also be your education. Education can also come in. Okay, I won't explain much because it's basically um, the same thing. Essentially, education helps to improve productivity and productive capacity. Okay, people can produce more in a shorter amount of time because they are more educated. Okay, so this one will also reduce, uh, sorry, increase AS, reduce inflation. Okay, so one thing you can acknowledge here okay, is that the limitations to this policy is that it's actually a very, very long-term policy. Okay, it takes very long for education to come to play and R&D can also be extremely um, costly, okay? So R&D usually they call it a high risk, high reward project. Okay, so it can actually be extremely costly, okay, extremely risky as well. So not all firms may take it up. Okay, or not all firms may actually be confident enough to take it. So this could actually also result in limitations to your inflation rate. Okay, so you notice that in this case, right, um, it will actually help to tackle everything. Okay, so lastly, your conclusion. Okay, your BP3 conclusion. Okay, your conclusion, you can really just talk about how Singapore needs to focus on trade agreements. Okay, you basically your whole idea of trade, of free trade. Okay, because with free trade, okay, you notice that a lot of these problems are actually mitigated. Okay, because when you've got free trade, there's a lot of barriers to entry which have been removed. Okay, so chances are when, you're, when it comes to your rate of inflation being high, Okay, it's extremely hard for um, your economy to actually crumble. Okay, because you still have goods which are coming in um, non-stop. Okay, one more thing. Okay, there is a need to pair policies to achieve the most desirable outcome. Outcome in this case would be the lowest inflation rates. Okay, so when you actually combine your policies, in this case we're talking about it, we're looking at your appreciation. Okay, as well as the supply side policies, that's the only way whereby everything can actually be reduced further and um, maxed out okay, to make it the most efficiently used policy out there. Okay, so um, basically, all in all, you need to really understand okay, that the policies, different policies introduced, must tackle the different root causes. Okay. Well, only when you tackle the different root causes can you actually truly achieve a good outcome. Okay, so this whole question is actually very simple. Okay, the student, the mistake that a lot of students make, okay, is that when you look at the question, 
they f- completely forget about exchange rate policy and go on to talk about other policies. Okay, when the question gives you specifically a certain policy, in this case exchange rate appreciation, you have to use it. Okay, make it your your most outstanding paragraph of all, and then just use another policy to complement it to help manage its shortfalls. So that in the end, when you actually look at whether it's the most important, you can actually conclude okay that yes. Okay, exchange rate policy can be the most important in certain aspects, okay? But you also acknowledge the fact that it may not always be the most important, let's say, in the long run. Okay, in the long run, there could be supply-side policies which will do a better job. Okay, so if not, that is this whole question, okay? Um, actually, a very simple question. You realize that most of this topic, uh, the questions are actually very, very similar. So just go ahead and study this question, okay? Go ahead and write out the essay yourself, okay? And then um, keep practicing on these kind of questions and... Trust me, it will be a piece of cake in no time. Okay, if not, um, stay tuned for more videos. Okay, do go ahead and subscribe. Okay, and leave a like if you did enjoy this video and I will be sure to cover more um, very, very soon. Okay, bye-bye.